This is the most comprehensive systematic review on carbohydrate intake when it comes down to building muscle, when it comes down to strength and resistance training. The results of this surprised me as well as lots of other people. I was wrong about some things with carbohydrates before, and I was wrong even yesterday when I look at this stuff. Not blatantly wrong, like you need to just erase your memory of everything I ever talked about, but how we look at carbohydrates. You see, all the studies that were systematic reviews on carbohydrates and performance, carbohydrates and muscle building, they were all what were called narrative reviews, which is where the authors are able to pick their own studies to include in the review. Clearly, this can lead to bias, even sort of subconscious bias or unconscious bias. Now, in this particular case, this looked at all the literature. And the way that they broke this up and analyzed it is unlike anything I've ever seen. And it's surprising. Now I'm gonna outline the study, I'm gonna outline what they found, and then I'm gonna outline the practical approach for each part of the study. So you have to stick with me through the whole video because otherwise it's probably not going to make as much sense unless you see the whole picture. After today's video, I put a link down below for 25% off Seeds Daily Symbiotic. They're a sponsor on this channel. They have been for years, which means that they make this content literally possible. Okay, now that is a 25% off discount link for their Symbiotic. So it's a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule, which means that you're getting potentially better delivery of that capsule, of the actual compounds inside it because you're not getting it destroyed by the hostile gut biome or the hydrochloric acid in your gut. Now, additionally to that, they have a lot of clinical evidence behind their product. I am not a big fan of probiotics. I usually tell people consume yogurt, get kefir, things like that, probiotic rich foods, fermented foods, but there is a time and a place to add probiotics in, especially if you're making a change to your diet, especially if you're trying to potentially utilize more nutrients and get the benefits there. So that link down below gets you 25% off Seeds Daily Symbiotic. So what this study did is it took a look at 49 studies that were exceptionally comprehensive and it divided them into four categories. This is what makes this study so unbelievably unique. The first category was the acute category. How do carbohydrates impact your workouts and your muscle building and your strength if they're consumed anywhere 24 hours before your workout, ranging from the day before all the way up to right before a workout? Okay, that was category one. The second category was how do carbs impact a workout, muscle building, strength, if they are consumed after being depleted? So after long workouts where you're completely depleting your glycogen stores and then refilling. The third category was moderate short-term carbohydrate usage. So what does two to seven days of carbohydrate ingestion do for workouts? Does it improve your strength? Does it improve muscle building? And then finally, anything over a week. So one week to three months, long-term carbohydrate intake. How does that impact strength, performance, and muscle building? Here's what the study found. And remember, this is looking at all the literature. So let's look at the acute setting first, because I think we tend to think we know it, right? We know what we're talking about. Oh, have carbs before your workout. And full disclaimer, this is not a low carb versus high carb study. Not at all. It's flat out systematic honest review, okay? 11 out of the 19 studies that they looked at for short-term carbohydrate performance improvements showed no significant effect. So for the most part, 11 studies showed that if you have a bolus of carbohydrates 24 hours to 30 minutes prior to your workout, it doesn't change your workout performance, your strength, or anything like that compared to not. Now, eight out of the 19 did show a small improvement with carbohydrates 24 hours to 30 minutes prior to the workout. But what they found is that all eight of those studies, the people that had the carbs were in a significant caloric surplus compared to those that didn't. So when you look at the isocaloric data, when the groups that were actually compared and had their calories matched, carbohydrates did not make a dent. It didn't change their performance or their strength. The only thing that did is when they had carbs along with extra calories. So it seemed as though the calories the day before 
might have been a stronger determining factor of how they were going to perform that day than having 40 grams of carbs prior to the workout or something like that. There was one study that found a really interesting finding, and this just paints a picture of how the mind can work. They had subjects consume carbs or water. The carb group, significant improvement in squat performance. The water, meh. Then, those tricky guys, they gave subjects water, but they flavored it and told them it was carbohydrates. Suddenly, their performance improved as if they had carbohydrates because they were told they were having carbohydrates. I consume carbohydrates. I'm not an anti-carb guy, but I find this fascinating because it aligns with what Dr. Tim Noakes has talked about for years, that carbs are almost a psychological aid. Like they do something for us. It's a signal of abundance where, ah, I can go, but it's happening from here up, possibly. Now, you're probably wanting to turn off this video because you think I'm some low carb zealot. It's not what I'm talking about at all. As a matter of fact, where carbs did show a significant improvement was when the volume was high. So if the workouts were longer than say 10 sets with resistance training, having carbs the day before did seem to make a noticeable difference. What's interesting is that most people actually don't train with the volume to where the carbohydrates would make an impact. So this is where it's important to note. If you're an athlete and you're training decently high volume, some carbs prior to probably will help you. Now, I'm not a professional athlete, but I train like a professional athlete. And I do find that if I load up on carbs a tiny bit the day before, it's a noticeable improvement. But now, like, now I second guess if, I'm just, if it's just psychological or not. Let's talk about what they found with the glycogen depletion group, because this is really fascinating. In this case, they had them either deplete with cycling or deplete with lifting. What that means is they had them work out until their carbohydrate stores in their muscles were drained. So they were down to nothing. Three of the six studies analyzed here showed no significant improvement with carbs being added back in after being depleted. Only one of the studies was isocaloric though. So out of all six studies they looked at, only one was actually matched for calories. And in that case, there was no significant difference. So when they had them eat the same amount of calories, but they had them consume either low carb or high carb after being depleted, there wasn't a significant difference. Now, this sounds almost unreal. It sounds unfathomable. If you deplete yourself of carbohydrates, then of course the group that has carbs is gonna perform better because where's the group otherwise getting energy from? There is a valid explanation to this and I'm gonna save it for the end when I give a practical analysis and a practical application, how we can take what we learned from this study and apply it to regular life. But if I throw it at you right now, it's probably gonna to be too much. So just know there is a reason and there is an answer. So next we look at the two to seven day carbohydrate group. So if you were to start eating carbs right now and then measure your performance a week from now, your strength, your resistance training performance, your muscle growth, what would happen? Bottom line, out of all the randomized controlled trials that they looked at, none of them showed a significant difference. There was a small difference with carbohydrates over the course of a week, but it wasn't anything noteworthy. As a matter of fact, only one of the studies they looked at was isocaloric. So most of them that had more carbs in the equation also had more calories. Before I get into the next piece, what are we starting to notice from this? What, are, what we're starting to notice is that an area where we thought we had a lot of knowledge, when you actually look at the literature, you realize all the holes and the gaps that we're missing. We have so much data on carbohydrates, but when you look at it, you're like, ah, shoot, most of the data with carbohydrates is actually data where they're eating more too. And if you eat more and you have more energy balance, like more you know, energy than you're expending, you're going to have more strength. And that's pretty common, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's talk long-term. What about people that consumed carbs for over a week, for a month, for two months, for three months? That has to have an impact. In this particular quarter of the study, there were 17 studies. Okay, so a lot of data here. The low carb median group had about 44 grams of carbs as the average. 
all the way up to an average of 275 as the median on the high end. Again, it's not comparing low carb to high carb. That's not the point. It's to analyze where do carbs come into play and how do they impact performance. So we're looking at roughly 50 versus roughly 300 on the high end. In this particular group, the training was much more dynamic. There was a lot more measurement. There was a lot more real life measurement because it's over a longer period of time. More data was aggregated, uh, also able to look at CrossFit athletes, able to look at more athlete types versus just recreational lifters. So you got a lot more information out of this. There were studies that looked at flexion and extension strength tests, at volume, there were one repetition max tests, there were overall reps to failure tests to see like, would carbs allow someone to train to failure and would failure come quicker or later? They looked at it all. 15 out of the 17 studies looking at long-term carbohydrate intake found no significant effect. What on earth? This is where even I am like, this doesn't make sense to me. Like, of course, someone that's constantly topping off their glycogen is going to have more strength, right? Well, apparently not. Let's dive in a little bit more. Eight of these studies were matched for calories, which is nice. We had more that were matched for calories because it was easier to do that over the long term. They were also matched for protein, which we need to factor in too, because protein, if you had low protein, that would certainly affect strength and recovery. And with this, still, no significant effect. Why could this be? The most logical explanation is that you are going to replenish your glycogen stores however you need to replenish your glycogen stores. There are a lot of variables here. The volume of training could deplete you more. And in that case, maybe more carbs would help you. If you're low carb, your body tends to pick up the slack and goes through different various forms, like the Cori cycle, gluconeogenesis, to restore glycogen. We actually restore glycogen a little bit more, just naturally, than I think we have given credit for. So we've always been so quick to cram more carbohydrates. Now, if you're depleting consistently, it would make sense to add more. But if you're depleting consistently and you're not eating carbohydrates, your body is actually going to replenish carbohydrates from the glycerol backbone of fatty acids. And then before you get ahead of yourself and you think, yeah, but your muscle mass is gonna go down, this is where it actually gets exceptionally intriguing. Over these one to three month period studies, they looked at muscle growth. Certainly carbs have to have an impact on muscle growth. 15 of these longer term studies looked at this and they found that there was no significant effect of solely carbs on muscle growth. However, the studies where there was muscle growth did happen to have more carbs, but they had more calories. The groups that were isocaloric and matched for calories did not have a significant improvement in muscle growth. This tells us one of the most important things that you could take away from this entire video and this study. Calories trump carbs for muscle growth. People say you need carbs for muscle growth, and I don't disagree that having some carbs could help offset some things and could offset muscle protein breakdown and might be more advantageous than low carbs. But carbs are not more important than calories. In fact, the hierarchy would go protein above calories because you can build muscle in a deficit with protein. Protein above calories, calories above carbs. That is the hierarchy in which you need to look at things. The only way that carbs could help you based upon this is that they probably are a tremendous appetite stimulant. They will encourage you to eat more. Those rises and falls in insulin, that can certainly make it easier for you to get more calories in. Calories definitely influence building muscle, but not as much as protein, but more than carbs. Let's talk practical stuff here. The short-term timing of carbohydrates. You're still relying on glycogen. Okay, if you were to go and have 25 grams of carbs before your workout, you're just going to incinerate that really fast. It's not gonna make a huge noticeable impact unless you were intra-workout constantly pounding carbs. Okay, so it's not having a huge impact. Most of what you're getting your performance from is your stored glycogen. And 
I'm gonna read you a quote from this study that's very important. The lack of isocaloric controls makes it impossible to determine. Basically what we're finding here is that by not having studies that are matched for calories, we cannot safely say that having carbs before a workout is going to make you perform better or build more muscle. We need more data on it. It is highly, highly debatable at this point. Okay, now let's talk about the glycogen depletion setting because I promised you that I had an answer here. So if you drain your carb tank, you're telling me that if I add carbs versus don't add carbs, it's not gonna make a lick of a difference? That's where it does matter, the timing matters. So if you were to deplete your carbs and then add carbs in the first four hours after depleting, you would notice a difference because you would restore glycogen faster than you ever naturally could otherwise. So that is where it matters. So if you deplete, a lot, like you have a really hard workout that's two hours, yes, that four hour period after a workout is going to be ideal to replete and restore glycogen and that is going to make you perform better the next day. But if you were to just restore your carbs casually over the course of 24 hours, it doesn't seem like you're really offsetting anything like counterbalancing the natural restoration of glycogen that's gonna occur just from your diet and from other pathways like the Cori cycle. Essentially, even if you're low carb, your body's going to restore glycogen utilizing other substrates. That's what people do not realize. And it doesn't come at the cost of muscle unless your calories are very low. If your calories are high enough and you don't consume a lot of carbohydrates, your body will find a way to restore glycogen, at least enough to where it doesn't impact your performance that drastically with an average workout. Of course, if you went for longer workouts, you should probably add carbs. We've determined that. Longer workouts, longer, harder workouts, add some carbs. The two to seven day group, still no significant difference with carbs, right? But what we found with this is that all the studies that we looked at, the workouts were 24 hours apart. 24 hours is enough time to restore glycogen. If you're eating a normal diet, whether it's high carb, low carb, moderate carb, you're probably gonna restore a lot of your glycogen. You may not top them off all the way, but you're gonna fill them up enough to sustain an adequate workout because you might only burn through 80 grams, 100 grams of carbs through your workout. You don't need to be at 300, 400 grams of stored carbs for a one hour workout. You just don't. You need to be at 80 or 100. So unless you are in ketosis, you're probably gonna replenish that just fine on a lower carb diet. And if you are in ketosis, you're gonna replete it through the Cori cycle. So as long as the workouts are spaced 24 hours apart or just long enough, you're gonna replete enough to sustain the next workout. But if you're working out for two, three hours, it becomes a different story. Long term, the one to three months, this was the most surprising. I thought that like consistently keeping glycogen topped off, but it just begs the question once again, is there a difference in your workout performance at 50% glycogen stores or 100% glycogen stores. It doesn't seem to be. So you don't have to be topped off all the time. That is why when you're low carb, as long as you have enough glycogen to sustain the workout, you're fine. There is a benefit to having more glycogen as far as muscle volume and internal leverage is concerned, but that's probably where we start getting in the weeds a little bit. So what is my answer? How do you apply this? Don't trip up about it. Have your carbs post-workout if you're going to have them. It gives you the best chance of restoring that glycogen and that is where the carb timing seems to matter the most if you're gonna be getting into the timing system because you have hormones in your favor. Other than that, if you like to eat carbs, eat your carbs, but don't worry about the timing. If you wanna worry about the timing, we need to talk about other things. Sleep, circadian rhythms, way too much for this video that's just gonna bleh, like make you go crazy and not wanna even deal with this video. If it's performance and fat loss and muscle building, just get them how you wanna get them, but also don't trip up about it. If you are an athlete, your carb demand probably will be higher. If you are an endurance athlete, I'm gonna put you in a different category. If you are a regular athlete, just sports, CrossFit, recreational athlete that trains for more than 90 minutes, Yes, you are a bit of an anomaly and you could benefit from having some more carbs. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.